Lutheran Church from Rochester, Minnesota. To start our worship today, let's share our highs and lows.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we confess that we are restless. In our anxiety to be free from this pandemic, we have not always put the needs of the vulnerable ahead of our own. Creating God, we pray to you. Over the crushing weight of making big decisions, we have not always remembered to treat others with love and empathy. Redeeming God, we pray to you. In this time of heightened social upheaval, it is tempting for us to think the worst of those we disagree with. Sustaining God, we pray to you. Siblings in Christ, take heart. In Jesus, God promises rest for our weariness, grace for our mistakes, and a love that makes us new. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. You are free from the weight of your burdens. You are free to love as Christ loves us. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. What is this, or what does this mean? That I should be certain that such petitions are acceptable to and heard by our Father in heaven. For God himself commanded us to pray like this, and has promised to hear us. Amen, amen, means yes, yes. It is going to come about just like this. Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 40. The greatest commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Here ends the reading. Welcome to worship in our sermon moment this morning. Again, it is brought to you by Pastor Ben and myself. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 36. Actually, I think through 40. Yeah, 40 works a lot better than adding on the 41 to 46 part. That's just weird. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> okay, so we're going to change it. We're going to go to 40. <laughs> and then we'll also talk about the conclusion to the Lord's Prayer to wrap up our discussion with the Lord's Prayer um, and tie it all in today for Reformation Sunday. Got so, my uh, Reformation red on a little bit here. Yeah, you do. I have purple. Does that count? It counts. It's a, you know, part red. <laughs> All right. So, Ben, uh, what did you notice about either our, our scripture for today or our um, the conclusion to the Lord's Prayer? Uh, yeah, uh, kind of starting in the scripture. Um, Jesus uh, is asked this question about uh, which, which commandment is the greatest. And he answers and he gives, you know, sort of the greatest commandment that, that he notes, um, which is to uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Um, and then he gives another one. So as if one wasn't enough, he gives, you know, a little tag on one. Um, but what I noticed most about this is that neither of those actually shows up in the list of 10 commandments that we have. Um, yeah. So maybe they were expecting Jesus to answer with, oh, it's obviously the first commandment, or maybe it's the fifth commandment. But Jesus says, "Yeah, well, here's two other commandments that might uh, might actually uh, work better as the greatest commandments." Um, so, so that was kind of one of the things I noticed. Um, but, but part of that with with these two commandments that Jesus brings up is that even though they aren't in the list of the Ten Commandments, they both give good summaries of the of the two tablets of the commandments. So, the first three commandments are about our relationship with God. Um, and so that would be this first commandment Jesus brings up of, you shall love the Lord your God. 
Uh, and then the second uh, tablet of the commandments, which is the, uh, the, the final seven, um, is about us and our neighbors. And then Jesus offers this other commandment of love your neighbor as yourself. So giving commandments that aren't actually in the list of 10. Right. But it's not actually 12. It's just right. summarizing what mm -hmm. we have. And I thought this was actually um, probably more helpful that Jesus does it this way as instead of picking out uh, any of the 10. Because um, what it does is that it, it sort of detaches uh, what he's talking about from any sort of list of rules that we have to follow. Because mm -hmm. um, if he picked out one of the 10, then you could be like, oh, all I have to do is not murder anybody. Right, <laughs> right. And then I've got it because right. the other don't care. They don't matter as much because Jesus said so. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you can easily sort of draw, draw a line about what I have to do. Um, and it, it sort of plays to a, like a, an idea of, of doing the minimum to pass a test. Mm -hmm. um, if I, what do I have to do just to pass the test? Okay. I just have to answer six out of these 10 questions and then I'll pass. But, oh, what do I have to do if I want to get a B? Uh, oh, we have to answer eight out of the 10. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so I, I, that's another aspect of it where I like that it isn't just this cut and dry sort of a thing. Right. Where it, in fact, he's saying you, you kind of have to do all 10. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love God and you got to love your neighbor, which is all 10. <laughs> right. Yep. And, uh, and then he, and he doesn't offer any clarifying points to any, like he doesn't define any of this at all. Um, uh, they, they could have asked, or maybe Jesus could have chimed in with, well, um, to borrow Luther's language, what does this mean? What does this mean to love the Lord your God with all your heart, um, soul, mind, and strength, and all those things? Uh, Jesus said, well, it means to do this, but Jesus never does that. Um, and, and the same thing with loving your neighbor. Jesus doesn't explain what that means. Love your neighbor as yourself. He, he doesn't tell us, he doesn't give us that list. Um, so what does that mean for our lives? Um, it could be easier and it could be harder. I, I don't know. I think, that, um, yeah, it, is love something, I, I think what I noticed too is that is love something that can be commanded? Hmm. Uh, because I think about like, my own children and if I tell them say your story or you know stop fighting or <laughs> share your toys they might do it but they don't really do it with a you know with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind they just mm -hmm. do it because their mom said so um, <laughs> but that's what God is calling us to do when we do love God and when we do love our neighbor we're supposed to do it with all of our heart all of our our mind and all of our soul um, and so how how do you do that yeah and that's like I mean that's listing absolutely everything that could be considered you your heart your soul your mind like all like what is you well that is you and so you are supposed to love God with all of you it's not just one little part you aren't just going through the motions you aren't you aren't doing it because you've been told to it is it is love and it's from all of you all the time yeah <laughs> which is so much harder because you know like you think okay i love my neighbor i just have to you know write a check out to the food shelf or maybe help them stack the shelves you know stack the shelves every once in a while that's loving my neighbor i've done my part um but that's just with part of you right um, and, and i know there was a there was a skit on saturday night live this last week um about um about drinking empathy and like five hour empathy and then you would be able to feel you know <laughs> truly what it is to be you in your neighbor's shoes and mm -hmm. nobody wanted to drink it <laughs> right oh that was a great sketch i mean because they were like oh i, I really want to feel what everybody's feeling and i wish there was some easy way i could do it and well here you go here's the easy way to feel what somebody's feeling and then oh no thanks <laughs> Uh, yeah. 
And, and that's what God is asking us to do. Like we can't just write a check or go, you know, work at a food shelf or pass out food. We actually have to love them with all of our heart, which means knowing what they're going through and, and understanding them. Yeah. And, and listening and listening to understand, um, not listening to respond to somebody, which I think is often um, kind of our default in, in the world where we think we, we kind of have to defend ourselves and be ready all the time. And especially as um, things in our society have gotten more uh, partisan and hyper-partisan, we think, oh, I have to always be ready to defend. Um, and if you're only listening to defend yourself or respond to somebody else, then you aren't actually listening to get to know someone and understand what they're going through and, and the, the struggles in their lives. Right. It's so much easier to just have a checklist. That, that was kind of where I was thinking of, of going and where, where it sort of took me is, is this sort of not just doing my part, but um, God wants all of it all the time, um, loving God and also loving our neighbors as ourselves and, and doesn't give us that list, which I think is, is maybe another part of the, the genius that Jesus offers us here is if, if, if Jesus gave us a list, then not only would it be a, a sort of playing to the minimum, but that would sort of set it in stone for all time. Mm -hmm. And I think by not defining it, Jesus leaves open the possibility that what is, what is useful for, your for doing for your neighbor in one time might not be useful in the next time, that there are other needs and things that happen throughout life um, that change how you love your neighbor. Uh, and that even change maybe how you love God. I mean, it's certainly, um, you know, a hundred years ago when they were going through a, a flu pandemic, um, the idea of worshiping God through the computer would have been the highest, you know, it, it wouldn't have even entered people's minds as being a possibility of fantasy. Like it just was not, not any, anything that anybody would have thought of that you could connect um, through through screens that you were watching and, and have real-time interaction with people. I mean, that just wasn't th a thing. No. So, so if you, if we had, had, you know, taken what, what they would have said as how, how can we love God through just the base, base example of worship. Um, and they would have defined it at that time. And we said, oh, well, it has to be that way. Then we wouldn't be holding worship services. Right. Yeah. And I, I think we all, we have to look through all of scripture with that lens as well, um, mm -hmm. because they were definitely writing for a time and a place. And, and understanding that, that we're going after the spirit of what they were pointing to, not necessarily the letter. Yes. So what did you notice about um, the conclusion to the Lord's Prayer? Or is there any way that we can tie that in? Yeah, I think um, it's really, it's interesting to note um, in this, uh, study edition of the catechism that, that we've been working with uh, through, the, through this time, that they note that uh, this conclusion part was not part of Luther's original small catechism. This was only added after Luther died. And uh, the explanation that we have here wasn't even for this part, uh, for the conclusion, um, the doxology is another word for it. Um, this is just about the word amen. This, that somebody, I'm not sure who who put it in there, which, which person put it in there first, but like, oh, well, we say amen at the end of the prayer. So let's just talk about what amen means. I'm certain that was the rationale for including it. I mean, it's right. not it's not bad. It's really good. But um, I think maybe where, where we could tie it in a bit is looking at sort of what, what does it mean for, for us to talk about God's um, kingdom and power and glory um, now and forever? which picks up certainly on some of the themes that we touched on earlier in the catechism, you know, God's will and God's kingdom. Um, but, but those maybe tie in with a bit about um, kind of where we were at with, with that first, uh, with that first answer that Jesus gives about which is the greatest commandment. Um, maybe this has something to do with loving God. Um, Cause if the kingdom and the power and the glory are God's um, well, maybe this is part of part of that. You know, recognizing that these things um, are God's and that we, are, we hope that God um, brings us in. And we've been praying throughout this whole prayer that we hope God brings us into 
to God's fulfillment of these things and God's working in the world. Um, but that the recognition that, nope, it isn't up to us. This is, this is all God's. And I saw that too. And then throughout the whole uh, Lord's Prayer, when you would look at Martin Luther's, what does this mean? It was always a both end. It was God's already doing this, but we're praying this so that we make it so. Like we help to make this, um, this kingdom here on earth. We help to make sure that God's power and God's love um, is shown throughout. So it's a both end. So I see that conclusion as that too. Like I'm, I'm praying it again so that I remember myself that I'm your instrument, God, and, and help me to be your hands and feet in this world. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to be aware of those things. I think, yeah, a lot, large part of the prayer is helping us um, change our perspective so that we're aware of, of how God is acting in the world and, and acting through us. And, and so that we have those eyes of faith to see um, what's going on. As we look to today, um, how does how do both um, the scripture reading and the and the conclusion how do they how do they speak to what's going on right now? You spoke a little bit about the flu um, pandemic in today. Yeah, the flu pandemic, but also I think um, just being aware that we are uh, two weeks less than two weeks away from uh, a major election, yeah. and recognizing as we mentioned, that there is a, a hyper-partisan uh, divide in our country. Um, the extent that that actually exists, I mean, who knows? I mean, we certainly hear about it um, through different um, sources of media and social media and just in our regular everyday conversations. Um, but but it, it helps us be aware, I think, of that. And, and what does it look like for us to uh, what does it look like for us to love our neighbors as ourselves, including those neighbors that we have major partisan differences with? Um, I think that's really that's really where the rubber meets the road, and I think that's part of where where Jesus is at when he offers this. He's this is um, this is during Holy Week. Jesus has um, has done Palm Sunday already. He is has been coming in and out of Jerusalem during this time. And he's been facing or faced with and confronted by a number of um, religious leaders and, and other people who are um, trying to trap Jesus and trick him and get him in trouble. And, and so he is, he is being confronted by this, this hyper-partisan divide as he is approaching his, his death. And, um, and he, he sort of really just brings it and sets it out there and says, love your neighbors as yourself, including those of you right here in front of me who are trying to trap me and get me in trouble with the Romans and everybody else. Yeah, yeah, because it was the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. So they gathered together and just that phrase, they gathered together, um, you know, maybe there was some rumors and name calling and, and then, uh, yeah. And then the lawyer came out and, and, uh, te and tested him really. And to see what he was going to say. It's, it's a, a fraught time for Jesus. And, um, and, and we uh, also maybe are feeling a bit of that ourselves. And so, so sort of how does Jesus um, deal with this? Well, he just lays it out plainly. Love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right. And I did note um, too, I noticed that this isn't a new commandment. I mean, these were, not only were they kind of in the Ten Commandments just not said, but they were they were spoken about in the Old Testament and in, in definitely in the Jewish um, Torah, all, you know, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Um, these were commandments that they followed. So what does it look like for us on Reformation Sunday? But now we aren't together and we aren't um, um, celebrating um, in that way. Uh, and loving, and like you said, loving your neighbor is going to look differently today um, that, um, than it did yesterday or that it will tomorrow. Um, and I, I see loving your neighbor would be gathering together and helping them out and sitting with them if a loved one dies. You, you go and you gather together and you mourn together and you be together 
And those things can't happen. And so by doing that, by staying away, we're loving our neighbor. It's the, it's that reformation understanding of, um, things, things are good for a time for the church and then they need to be reformed. They need to, they need to change and shift with the time. Um, so that, so that you can actually proclaim the gospel in new times and new ways uh, for, for people going through new, new and different things or, or just, um, just ways that are, that are fresh and able to be heard again. Um, it isn't that the gospel itself is changing. Uh, that, that's the, the hallmark of our Reformation faith is we aren't, we aren't inventing something new. We are proclaiming the gospel, but we, are, we have to we have to cling to the gospel and only the gospel and not the stuff that gets built up around the gospel that helps us for a time proclaim the gospel, but in the end, it isn't the good news. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that reformation piece helps us, I think, um, deal with this. And, and as Jesus, you know, I pointed out for Jesus, he doesn't sort of nail it down to one thing for all time, other than the fact that these broad categories of loving God and loving your neighbor. I mean, that's, that's the base. Yeah. And we, I, I do know that on this Reformation Sunday, things in the church are changing um, again. <laughs> uh, and we're definitely going to be changing the way we do church from here on out. It's not, I'm not saying we're not going to gather, I, but we definitely are going to have more of an online presence and more of a, um, more interactive this way, I think, than we ever have before for many churches. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. I'm always hopeful and always optimistic. And however much I don't like gathering together, I think this is forcing us all to, to proclaim the good news in new and different ways um, so that it can, this, this gospel can be proclaimed to all. All right. Well, thank you so very much. And, uh, and let us continue with worship. Are you ready? Are you ready for okay. your question? Okay. How do you like to celebrate? Like when there's a birthday or a party, what's your favorite? <laughs> well, what? Whippy always, Whippy always likes it because it has the part with the cake. Oh, the cake. Okay. For cake. sure. My favorite <laughs> way. Luffy's just so excited. Do you like cake? Do you like cake? Cake! Cake! I love cake, too. How else do you like to celebrate? When there's a party. I like having balloons. Because Auntie Louise uh, what's the name again? Auntie Linda, she used to get you balloons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like cake and birthday balloons and birthday presents and, and birthday parties. And birthday surprises. I like birthday games. I love all those things too. And uh, for church, today is the last day for the last part of the Lord's Prayer. So you have one more sticker to put on. And that's kind of actually like a praise or a celebration. Uh -huh. And it says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And it's a big <laughs> praise. Right? Amen. Oh, what's one of my favorite instruments? I spell amen. 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 What's one of my favorite instruments? Uh, uh, um, violin. violin. Do you think I fun? love the violin. Do you guys have a violin to play with at home? No. No, no. Do you have a little plastic egg? Yeah. Well, then you can praise too. Because you can take that egg and you can fill it with something like rice or beans or something that makes noise and glue it shut. Elmer's glue works or tape. And then what will happen when you shake it? Noise. 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 Just like a party, like a celebration. Because when we praise God, we can praise God in so many ways. What do you think? Does that sound fun? Yeah. Yeah. Can you do a shake? It makes noise. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. They're assembling their praise devices. Oh, the
The praising devices, excellent. What other praising devices do you have? What do we got? Okay. Marble. Marble. That was a good one. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That's wonderful praise. <laughs> Thank you for praising with me today. I love it. United with the whole church across time and space, let us join our confession with theirs using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our, our Lord, Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy the Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, let us pray for the church, 
the world, and all those in need. In your love, O God, you speak to your church. On this Reformation Sunday, renew and inspire us in the freedom of your love, and turn this love toward our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you create our earth, filled with living things of every kind. Sustain the intricate connections among plants insects, animals, and organisms we don't even know or recognize. Bless the work of scientists who help us extend neighbor love to the natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you guide with justice. Inspire leaders to hold truthful conversations and wise policies, that decisions are made for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who need healing, hope, or restoration this day, especially Byron, Lois, Mark, Wayne, James, Chris, Jeanette, Bonnie. Marcia, Sue, Jean, Harlan, the Smith and Erickson families, the family of Robert Fetty, and those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you so much for your continued generosity and support of our congregation's ministry during this time. You have enabled our saviors to continue sharing Christ's love and growing in our faith from birth to senior saints. You are invited to continue living into the faith practice of giving to the ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through our website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your gift to the church office. Again, thank you for your continued generosity and for the love of Christ that you share with the whole world. My name is Janelle Bonus, or Janelle Furl, as some of you may remember me by years ago. I've been attending Our Savior's Lutheran Church my whole life. I was baptized here in February 1985. Being raised in this church, much of my childhood was shaped by my experiences here. Sunday school, musicals, youth choir, confirmation, service projects, mission trips, youth gatherings, and now I'm so lucky to be able to share those experiences with my family. Tim and I were married here. Our children, Morgan and Kyle, were baptized here. Um, Worship, sharing communion, gift, Bible study. But more than that, this church is like a home. It's a place where my family and I find comfort, support, and love. We are challenged to broaden our thinking and understanding of the Lord and ourselves. There is a wonderful sense of community that we feel and others can see. At the youth gathering I attended my senior year of high school, we traveled with another church here in town. At the conclusion of the trip, one of the students from the other church pulled me aside. 
He told me that he was amazed at how close our group was and how much fun we had together, randomly bursting into song in the middle of the streets and just being together and not holding back. He said that that was something that his large church didn't have, that bond where we could just be ourselves and not worry about being judged or who we are or what we did. It was something that was modeled for us by the adults in our church, and it was something that came natural to us. I had taken it for granted up until that point, but since then, I've made sure to take note of all the wonderful things in our congregation and be thankful for all that our church does and who we are. It showed me that a church is more than the building. It's the memories you make, the things you learn, the gifts you give, and the people who are there for you and lift you up. I'm so thankful for my home at Our Saviors. Happy Reformation Sunday. Every year on the last Sunday of October, we remember and give thanks for Martin Luther and the other reformers who called the church back to its central focus, the grace and love of God that frees us from fear and sin. We hope that you can join us later today, immediately following this service at 10 a.m. for our Zoom coffee and fellowship time. The link for this is found on our website. Our next drive through communion is happening today from 2 to 3 p.m. Or it's supposed to. If the weather is bad, we might have to cancel. Stay tuned to our Facebook page and your emails in case we decide that we need to postpone. If we are on, please follow the same directions as our past few times. Stay in your cars the whole time. Wear a mask the whole time unless you are eating or drinking. Feel free to bring your own communion elements if you want to, but we also have some on hand for you. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, when we remember the saints of our congregation who were baptized over this past year, as well as those who have died this past year. We will light candles to remember them in our worship, but we will also make time during worship for you to light candles at your homes to remember your loved ones who have died. Please have candles on hand for worship next Sunday so that you can participate in this meaningful time of remembrance. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you and shared your abundant gifts. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, we may care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to set the table. So make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine or grape juice as we sing. Now that the table is set, we hear the story of how this holy meal of communion and promise came to be. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And finally, before we eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, first we pray. So, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for your beloved children whose struggles are great. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in for worship in order to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God and to help us remember this, I invite you to dip some fingers in water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else on the forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. Here again, Jesus' promise in the gospel according to St. Matthew. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Holy Comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you steadfast in faith, grant you peace, and grace you with empathy for the neediest among us. Amen. Let it be. 
The peace of Christ is with you always. May this week be filled with Christ's love, Christ's justice, and Christ's healing. Thanks be to God! Thank you for joining us for worship. Have a great week. (laughs) 